Okay, this is just a few thoughts on something that came to me this afternoon, a little kind of experiment that it would I would be interested to see carried out. I don't know whether this could ever be carried out. Um, this is all to do, this is a discussion that got on. It started from the subject of, of patriarchy and moved on to a kind of nature-nurture discussion. It was seeded, it was said off on a PZ Myers thread that was about douches, literally about douches, not about people acting in a douchey way, but about douches and then the unnecessary nature of women douching, etc., which I, I had no problem with. I, I totally agreed with the thrust of what PZ Myers was saying um, in his in his blog post there but I made the point that the comment that he'd linked I'll have to link it so that you can read it it mentioned patriarchy it blamed women douching it said basically this is another sign of the patriarchy so I made a comment that I think that that's often a red rag to a ball that the, the, the person that had that had started questioning this douching procedure probably wouldn't have done it if if they hadn't this person hadn't felt the need to to invoke the patriarchy yet again as the explanation because there is this kind of thing isn't there it's like it's like because evolutionary psychology was something that came up in this thread as a result of my um involvement and it was mentioned to you know it's a thing how do you it's so easy to make these just so stories with evolutionary psychology if you propose an evolutionary psychological explanation as opposed to that just being an alternative and that's a legitimate complaint about evolutionary psychological explanations of course it is but it's also the same complaint can be made whenever the patriarchy is brought up because again that's a just so explanation we all can always reverse engineer a way of saying well this is why the patriarchy is to blame for that in almost any circumstances so that came about and um, it made, made me start thinking really about this whole idea of how would you go about evidencing nature versus nurture or even nurture versus nature it's a very very difficult thing to tease apart or at least to tease apart ethically and especially to tease apart ethically in our own species um, partly because there's some confounding factors, it's not just genes and society, the sort of epigenetic factors, even parenting itself. You know, really in a way to just look at the um, non-societal factors, the non-nurture factors, you need it be unethical, you couldn't do this, but you'd have to take a baby away from its parents, from society, from humanity, and kind of bring it up in a sort of societal, cultural, a human vacuum where it was devoid of, of, of interplay with other human beings. But of course, that isn't a natural environment to bring a child up in the first place. So the child, you wouldn't expect such a child to develop normally would you the same as you wouldn't with any other animal uh, or any other mammal higher order mammal any other primate if it was devoid of that kind of companionship and upbringing that it needs but then what a parent imposes on a child how much of that is is nurture and how much of that is nature it could be that a that a percentage of our, the way in which we treat our children is innate and intuitive and even differences in treatment between boys and girls could be innate and intuitive because if if the success of a man and a woman in society depends on slightly different types of behavior then we would have more successful male offspring and more successful female offspring perhaps if we um, brought them up in slightly different ways. That might be the case, that might not be, but it's not something that we can rule out from the get-go. So it's all really rather difficult and it's all really rather intractable there. And even from the nurture side, if you wanted to try and prove nurture in all of this, that's rather difficult because even if you show, well, this society does this different to this society, this is an example of a society that isn't doing it, therefore it's got to be nurture not nature that doesn't demonstrate anything of the sort does it because of course any argument um, any nativistic argument just cites that as an in uh, as, a, as a, a component as a predisposition and and in just the same way i can tell you that my car which it does if i let go of the steering wheel it has a tendency to pull to the left now if you see me driving down the street and you see me turning right you know and you were to say well jim clearly Jim's car doesn't pull slightly to the left because I've just seen him turn right the fact that I can turn right in my car doesn't mean that it doesn't have 
uh, a predisposition, if you like, a vehicular predisposition to pull to the left. It, it certainly does, and I, and I wish I, I wish it didn't. Anyway, that's enough to do with my car. Um, maybe if I actually bought a new fucking car sometime rather than driving around in this old banger that lets the whole estate down, maybe that would help. But anyway, on to the experiment. So I, then I had an idea of a kind of experiment. I don't know, it, it's more ethical than anything that you could do with a child and perhaps more illuminating. Let me explain what it is. I mentioned a few videos back talking about this, about... Um, chimpanzees common chimps whenever i say chimps i mean common chimps as opposed to uh, the bonobo bonobos there right so if i say chimps that's what i mean so i talked about these common chimps and i st talked about the fact they've got a patriarchal society and we don't we don't think we don't sort of obsess and say well that's just got to be culture you know we accept that there could be an innate and intuitive component there i think most of us accept that we don't have a problem with chimps but we do with humans now when i mentioned that several people felt the need to point out to me ah yes jim but just because they've got a patriarchal culture doesn't mean that we do um or patriarchal society i should say doesn't mean that 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 means that we are mandated um, through nativistic means in just the same way that it's predisposed or determined in just the same way because bonobos are very different. They don't have that kind of patriarchal uh, culture, that kind of patriarchal society. And that's very true and it was a legitimate point to make. Although I wasn't trying to say that because chimps, common chimps are like that, humans must be like that. What I was just trying to say is that if we can accept that other great apes can have what we what we assume to be an intuitive and innate component to their behaviour on that level, then why wouldn't we expect natural selection to have impacted on us in the same kind of way? It seems almost counterintuitive to think that we would all turn out um, without any kind of predispositions whatsoever on these kinds of things. Well, here's the thing then. If you've got common chimps and you've got bonbos and they've got such different societies, this is the experiment then. We take some baby chimps away from their mothers um, they're probably going to be a bit pissed. Their mothers are going to be a bit pissed. So that's the unethical part. But we're going to bring these baby chimps, male and female alike, we're going to bring them up and encourage them not to act in ways that traditionally common chimps would act in. But let's let's bring them up to act in ways that young bonobos would act in and try and bring them up so that what we're trying to do is to create a bonobo-like society amongst common chimps. And it might take, we, we, we'll bring a whole host of chimps up, we'll keep them introduced to one another, all young chimps, and they'll all become the adult chimps, they've all been brought up in this kind of way, with our tutelage, with our instruction, with our um, co-opting or coercing or whatever we have to do with our encouragement. So that's what we're going to do. And maybe we manage to even get involved in the next generation, encourage certain parenting behaviours there to try and do that. So once we've built this society, then assuming it's possible and we can actually mould the common chimps into that bonobo structured society, we then leave it in the chimp enclosure to see what happens over the next few generations. I think it would be really, really illuminating to see what happened there. Once we'd set up that culture, that bonobo-like, non-patriarchal culture amongst common chimps, would it retain that structure? Um, or would they revert back? Would the predisp Are there predispositions um, towards a patriarchal structure amongst common chimps and if they are would that veer them back towards that kind of typical common chimp patriarchal social structure well that would be the experiment i think we would learn ever so much from that we couldn't necessarily um infer uh, that much towards humans directly but i think if you could show that the structures of, of chimp or bonobo society had that uh, innate, intuitive, nativistic element, then that would give us some suspicion that maybe the reason why most societies, most human societies have been patriarchal is maybe based at least in part on nativistic uh, means 
uh, to achieve those patriarchal ends in much the same way. That's not to say this is not a naturalistic argument, to say that that's something that we should aim for, by the way. I want to make that clear. I'd much rather see a much more equal society than that. But it would be interesting and it would be illuminating in terms of how we got to where we are now. Bloody hell, I've waffled on in this video, but I hope you found some of it interesting, giving you the chance to think about what I've just been thinking about. If it's not, you've not thought of it before. Thank you for watching. Um, and bye for now. Uh, off. Here.